What's going on everybody? Welcome. In this episode, we're going to be talking about the switch statement in C++. And if you've been watching from the beginning, congratulations on making it through the first 10 episodes. So I knew you could do it. I believed in you. Honestly, though, I didn't think you'd get this far. So congratulations if you did. We're going to continue working on our C++ skills. Let's jump into it. But first, a quick message and thank you from our sponsor, Embarcadero C++ Builder the IDE that we have been using for this series. This gives you the full suite for C++ development. Whether that's debugging, GUI development, or mobile development, you can do it all with C++ Builder. I'll drop a link to the free community edition down below. So with a switch statement, you will give it an expression or a variable, and it will do different things depending on what the value of that variable is. This is similar to the way an if statement works with the different else if branches, allowing you to do different things, and these all evaluate to true or false. The difference is that instead of using true or false, we're going to use different values. So you might have one, two, and three. So this is very nice when you're working with something that's going to have a very clear numeric output. So if you have a menu, choose an option, one, two, or three, hey, this would be a good time to use a switch statement. You can do pretty much everything, I think everything, that you can do with a switch statement using a basic if statement. However, the switch might give you a nicer syntax or you might be more comfortable with its setup. So in certain situations, you might prefer to use a switch statement. You should also know how they work if you run into them in the wild. So that was a lot of theoretical junk. Let's just go through an example. This is some of the code that we've been working with from previous videos. And we are checking if the user wants to play a game. They say yes, and when they say yes, we will then ask them what difficulty we want the game to be at. What I want to do is I want to focus on this section here. So they answer, they say what difficulty. Let's go ahead and create a switch statement to do different things depending on what difficulty they choose. You can see we have a similar structure to that here, but we are actually going to replace this with a switch statement. So to do this, we can first output what difficulty they chose. You chose difficulty got these arrows the wrong direction. And we will just then say difficulty and an end L. Then we will say switch. And inside of parentheses, you are going to put some expression or variable. We will use difficulty. And then we will define a set of curly braces. Now when you do this, you might get an error because of the type of difficulty. It requires an integer type. So right now, difficulty is a string and we are typing in easy, medium, or hard. Now, of course, you could correlate these to some number in code, but what might be easier is to actually make a menu where they can type 0, 1, 2, 3, whatever it might be. So in that situation, what I want to do is I actually want to change this from string to an integer. And now, where we ask them easy, medium, hard, we can give them numeric options. So we can say 0 is easy, and then we will do a backslash n and say 1, is medium, a backslash n, and then two is hard. And then after hard, we will, uh, let's just go ahead and remove these parentheses. It doesn't really make sense in this case. So we'll just say what difficulty, and then on a new line, we'll say zero, one, and two. And then afterwards, we will just create a new line. So this is a little hard to read. Let's go ahead and just test to make sure it works the way I'm thinking. And then I might just rearrange how we actually have the code so it's a little bit easier to read. Do you want to play a game? Yes. Have you beat the game? No. What difficulty? Zero, one, and two. So it looks nice here. However, if you don't like having code that looks like this, what you could do is you could just break this out into multiple statements. So we'll have one C out here and then we will create a new C out on the next line, and you can have as many as you want, whatever makes it easiest to see. So let's go ahead and put easy in one C out, and we'll do another one for medium, and then a final one for hard. So two is hard, and that should turn out to look exactly the same way, but it's a lot easier to read in our code. Yes, I want to play a game. No, I haven't beat it, and it works. Great. So now that we are getting an integer as an input, 
the switch statement is no longer complaining and inside of the switch we can have different cases for whatever they've said so if the case is zero that means they said that they want it on easy and you'll put a colon and this is going to be considered easy inside of the case I want you to say break each case is going to have a break statement and I'll explain why in a moment so we'll have case 0, case 1, case 2, and then you can also have a default case, which is everything else. And we will include the break for that as well. Before the break, you can put any custom code that you want. So this is similar to within the curly braces of an if statement, but we don't actually have to have the curly braces. So we could say, see out, you chose easy. So in this situation, it'll only say that if the user chose zero, which is easy. The break will actually jump out of the switch statement and go to the next line. If you don't have the break, it'll fall through and execute any of the other code in these other cases. It's a strange behavior, but it's the thing that you should definitely be familiar with. So let's do something very similar for these other cases. For case one, we will do medium. And then for case two, we will say you chose hard. And then the default case, basically if they said some number we're not familiar with, we can just say that we don't understand or just something like, bro, what? Whatever you want. Let's go ahead and try this out. Yes, I want to play a game. No, I have not beat it. And we will choose one for medium. And it says you chose difficulty one. You chose medium. So it looks like I have two print statements here. We can just remove this version since it's an integer. We don't want to uh, print that. Let's go ahead and try it again. This time let's put a different number. I'm just gonna fill out these comments if it's uh, helpful. Let's try a number that doesn't exist in this list. Yes, no, I have not beat the game. And then I will say five. And it says, bro, what? So that is how the default case works. And then the last thing I want to show you is if we forget to put the break, what happens? And this is an interesting way of having the same thing happen for case one and case two. So if you just removed this two, now if you type one or two, this is going to happen. So in certain situations, you might not want to put that break if you want to group a few different cases together like that. Or if there's a scenario where you want to do this code for case one and two, but you want to do a little bit extra for case one, you can do that as well. So let me show you that. Uh, and generally, you're always going to have the break, but you can kind of manipulate the functionality if you are trying to do something strange. But let's try this now. And we will go with medium. You can see it says you chose medium, you chose hard. So basically this was executed and then because we didn't have a break, it went down to this next section and then it stopped at this break. So it'll just continue to execute the different sections until a break is hit. That is your introduction to switch statements. Hopefully that was helpful. I'll usually use switch statements if I'm displaying some menu with clear numeric options but overall, I tend to prefer if statements. Now you can have expressions in here. So for example, difficulty plus five, obviously that's going to throw all of our numbers off, but that evaluates to an integer. So this will compile and run, but you can't use other data types in here. It needs to be a numeric type or char, which is directly correlated to integers. So that is your switch crash course. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.